Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Golden Road. Thank you, The Source. I hobbled all the way over here. Thanks to my daughter, Angie, for dragging me out from Marin County. And I think it's important, injury and all, I wasn't taken out by Monsanto. This was another type of injury. Um, it's important that I show up because I resonate with just about what you all are saying. I resonate with that. And that's why I'm here to kind of bring this all together. And what I've learned after doing over 45 talks since that book came out a year ago was that it's not how many of us show, shows up, it's who shows up. And don't underestimate the value of what one, two, or three committed people can do, especially when you activate the mama bear. It's, it's my secret weapon. Um, usually the goal of my medical practice is to piss off as many women as I possibly can, and um, the effects are phenomenal. So there is so many, I came to talk about something today, but hearing everyone speak, I thought I would try to maybe tie it all in. Um, what I'm hearing uh, people speak about, glyphosate in your ditches. I didn't know that was an issue. The copper issue, health-wise very significant. Glyphosate, Roundup, GMOs, glyphosate, Roundup, a big issue. And certainly what you just heard about 5G, I've been alarmed my, myself about 5G. There are tremendous parallels between what happened with GMOs and 5G, especially in terms of industry uh, lies, just out right collusion lies and orchestrated attempts by not attempts successful maneuvers by industry how to bamboozle us it's just quite incredible so i thought i would talk about children i've been a pediatrician for almost four decades and i'll try so i can just touch upon the different points that you all heard today regarding our kids health because our children are not faring that well i'll throw out a few st st statistics because i'm an md i love stats and people seem to believe me more when i talk about statistics especially you science folks out there who don't want to hear me talk about uh, homeopathy, for example, one of my other passions. Um, so I won't talk about homeopathy. I'll talk about stats. So we now have an issue where one out of two kids has a chronic disease, so that you know. So when you go into a classroom now, half the kids are going to need IEPs and have, you have special ed. And um, I can tell you, most of my own, uh, most of my friends have kids who have issues, et cetera, et cetera. And this is not um, without an environmental link. Let's be clear. Two, right, 51% of American children now has a chronic disease. And for those of you who don't know, what a chronic disease means is a disorder that's been around for more than three months and is not curable, but curable by allopathic or Western medicine. For, for those of us who are integrative practitioners, my colleague and friend, Dr. Lewis here, we do have other ways to heal chronic diseases, but I'll, I'm just gonna stick to what's reported in what we call Western uh, medicine or allopathic medicine. And those diseases span the spectrum. It's across all boards of health issues from obesity, one out of three kids, asthma, one out of six, and one out of every eight, autistic spectrum disorder, one out of 34 boys, one out of 58 kids, which has gone up since I even wrote the book that came out a year ago, neurocognitive disorders, sleep, out, sleep issues, two out of three kids can't sleep, they have dysomnias under the age of 10, and those are my favorite disorders because people are very motivated to make changes when their kids don't sleep. I just pray everyone's kids can't sleep. Having a kid up all night, oh, you'll change something. So these are the kind of things we're seeing, and I, don't want to leave that mental health issue because in Western medicine, we cut off the head from the rest of the body as if that's a separate disorder. Mental health issues like depression, anxiety, OCD, eating disorders, et cetera, are also sky high. About half of teens report those health issues, 46%. So you see, I think, did I lay the case that we have an issue among our children? And this is not just our children, it's our dogs. One out of 1.6 dogs will now develop cancer. The most common cancer is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. My own last dog died of uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and the reason why you and I know why that is, because that is the leading tumor associated with Roundup, and Mr. Dwayne Johnson, our hero, unfortunately, has a form of non, a very aggressive form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and since Mr. Johnson's case came up, there's been about 9,000 lawsuits filed against Monsanto, now bare. 
So this is changing. So anyway, I can go on and on, but I, I don't want to talk so much about, you know, I, you, I, I think you all get the picture that our kids uh, have some issues, right? Our dogs, the wildlife, the bees, it's, we're in the web. I don't need to preach that to this crowd. I think we all get it here. So we got a health issue. So how did I get into this? I got into this as an unwilling activist. I am not an activist by nature. I'm just a feisty New Yorker. I'm just a sassy pediatrician. But I was roped in by one of my moms, a parent from my old practice. And these gals in a kitchen in Marin County were stopping the spray against the light brown apple moth that was going to take place along the entire coast of Northern California around 2006. And one county got sprayed, Monterey. And these gals stopped the spray. And I say these gals, and it wasn't me. I just kind of sat around and drank organic coffee. They were amazing cooks. I ate really well. And so, but during that time, they said they stopped the spray, and I just kind of went along for the ride. And they said, Michelle, what do you think about GMOs? And I didn't really have a thought about GMOs. I'm embarrassed to think about that now. GMOs have been around since 1996. I didn't know a damn thing about them. And I said, I'm not thinking much. And one of the moms, Lisa, pointed me to Jeffrey Smith's book. And I read Seeds of Deception. And that's what opened my eyes into the journey of relating to this plethora of chronic disease in our children and understanding the link between chronic disease in kids and the effects of GMOs and their associated pesticides, which are glyphosate-based herbicides. You don't eat a GMO alone without its associated herbicide and effect on our kids' health. So I want to go into a little bit about what these things do and the effect on our health and why that, how that ties into this water issue, because I really want to keep it germane to what, Michael, what the topic of this show is, is the contamination of the water and what's happening here, not just here. And oh my gosh, there's so many counties now in California. So glyphosate, which is this ubiquitous, very simple glycine containing molecule. When you look at the chemical structure, it's like you've got to be kidding. This little thing does all this damage? Yes, indeed. It's very physiologic looking. It contains glycine and phosphonylmethylglycine. I know more about this molecule than I know about like things that I really should be studying, but I know a lot about glyphosate. And what this, this incredible molecule does is, well, number one, it's an antibiotic. And Monsanto Bayer um, patented as an antibiotic in 2010 as an antiprotozoal uh, uh, patent. And when I read the patent, because I have a tight sphincter, and I went back and looked at that patent, I said, what the hell does this stuff do? What it does is not only kill off protozoa, but Monsanto touted it as an antibiotic against strep, staph, every pathogen, even malaria. Every pathogen you can probably possibly think of was, um, was going to be uh, helped by glyphosate as an antibiotic. So you would think based on that, that we would have studied the effect of glyphosate on the human microbiome. That is the collection of organisms that make up your gut. Your gut is made up of bacteria, viruses, and yeast, and they work in a community called the microbiome biome, the, the, the mycobiome, and the virome. And it's a very complex interaction because, in fact, we are mostly microbial in origin, anywhere from 1 to 1 to 10 to 1. It just depends on the individual. You want a big, robust community of microbes in your gut because they are the basis for your health. Do not underestimate the value of microbiome. Love your gut bacteria. So this glyphosate no studies, no human studies in the effect of microbiome, but one may be coming out. Our friend here in the audience may know a little bit about that, but that, may, that literature is going to be emerging very shortly. It's being studied, and it's going to be published pretty soon. So, And it, the, the, the results are showing that, yes, indeed, glyphosate affects the human bi microbiome, um, and Roundup is, makes it even worse. Understand that glyphosate, glyphosate is bad. Roundup is worse. So we all, we all clear on that. No, good question. I didn't even plant you in the audience. So glyphosate and, uh, no, they're not the same. So round, glyphosate is the main ingredient in um, uh, over 700 formulations, Roundup being the most popular. What every company does, whether it's Bear Monsanto, Syngenta, Dow, they and add inerts. Now, notice I put those little, my little fingers waving in the air. Those inert are not so inert. For example, a Roundup has something called POEA. And what that is is a surfactant. And surfactants break down fat. 
And where you have fat is in your nerve cells, for example, and cell membranes, your mitochondria and the cells. So what those surfactants do is break down the cell membra membrane so the glyphosate can enter the cell and make it yet more toxic. So Roundup has been shown to be way more toxic than glyphosate alone. Most of that work came out of France by Dr. Gilles Eric Seralini, and boy, he was raked over the coals, but emerged triumphant. He's one of the biggest proponents that Roundup is way more toxic than glyphosate. But be clear, glyphosate in itself is not benign. So number one, it's an antibiotic. Number two, it's a metal chelator. That means, chelation means it binds minerals like copper, zinc, magnesium, chromium, and all those cobalt, all those essential minerals that you have in your body. And the way that this was discovered is when glyphosate was first brought into the market in the 70s, it was invented in 1950, by the way, by a Japanese researcher, it's been around forever, is that they use it as a metal cleaner. The, the staff or company used it as a metal cleaner. And they saw the weeds were dying around where they were cleaning these heavy metals. So they realized that not only is this a heavy metal cleaner, but it's an herbicide. And that's how they started. So it binds. We don't have any human studies on how it binds in humans. We have in cows. We have no human studies of the effect of GMOs and pesticides in humans. We have two studies on BT toxin in humans, two. And BT is a form of genetic, mo mod genetic modification using um, uh, bacteria. And so that's what we're eating, just aside. So it's a metal chelator. What am I seeing clinically in kids? Is this relevant? Well, it's relevant to your copper issue. I hear folks out here talking about copper. Yes, it is relevant. So when I see children, they're mineral deficient. They look clinically mineral deficient. They have these little white lines on their nails, these little horizontal lines. They have ridging on the sides of their tongues. They have coarse, dry hair. Clinically, you can look at kids and see that they're sick. You don't have to even have a laboratory. It's called physical exam. Oh, wow, that's crazy. You actually examine a child, and you see that they don't look well. So what we do is when you check them and you do some lab work because men want to see data, so I show the dads the numbers, the numbers are low. These kids, you cannot operate your brain without magnesium and zinc. And kids are low. When you restore their nutrients, they get better. Amazing. Clinical, clinical medicine. It's amazing. That's using minerals. Okay? Our children are deficient. The dogs are deficient. The soil is deficient. We're all related. So this is the other thing that's going on. Copper, just so you know, because I hear so much talk about copper, I, I didn't plan to come talk about heavy metals and talk, because we do need some copper to run our bodies. But copper is in a very nice relationship with zinc. So when you have too much copper, it drives down your zinc. And you need zinc to run about 250 reactions in your brain. And so if you have a kid who's zinc deficient, you better look for mental health issues. So when you have kids who can't focus, who have depression, who have anxiety, why don't you check their mineral levels? And we've known this for over a hundred years. It's called orthomolecular medicine. Dr. Abraham Hoffer in the 30s, 1930s, studied this. And it's a big field of medicine that most pharmaceutical-based medicine will not want you to know because minerals are not patented. They're cheap to treat. One bottle of minerals will cost you about eight bucks, last you about two months, right? You know, we, I won't go down that road. You don't want to take me down that road. No, this is not conspiracy theory. This is just reality. Oh, indeed they can. I think after I speak, I'm going to let Dr. Lou talk about it because she is a freaking master with the oligo scan. Oh, my God. She did mine. Mm, not pretty. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lou. It's, I'm a work in progress. I'm always working on my own health. But, yes, we work on this together. A couple more things that glyphosate will do, and then I'll move on. It blocks one of the key detoxification pathways in your body called the cytochrome P450 system. So we can't detox. Our kids are toxic. They can't detox. They already have diminished detoxification. And GMOs also reduce their ability to detox by reducing something called glutathione, the master antioxidant in their bodies. Separate research, separate stuff. I don't want to go into the GMO pathway. I want to stick to glyphosate and Roundup because I think that's really relevant right now to your show, what you folks are doing and what we really need to focus on. You heard about the carcinogenic issue. It was labeled by the World Health Organization as a class 2A carcinogen. It would have, which means probable, it would have been an absolute carcinogen except they didn't study it in humans, just uh, animals uh, and rats. And that's why it's a 2A and not a class 1 
carcinogen. If they had done the human studies, they would have shown that it was also a carcinogen in humans as well. I just wrote a paper, The Effect of Pesticides on the Microbiome and the Link to Childhood Leukemia. It's going to be out on uh, my website, www.gmoscience.org, and you're not going to find this anywhere else. We referenced over 25 articles in that. We publish twice a month, my little brilliant group and, and myself, um, bringing out the best uh, literature on pesticides, GMOs, and the effect on health. And we are totally um, <clears throat> underfunded uh, volunteers. We're a lot like your group, Michael. We don't get a lot of money, and we're on a shoestring budget, but we have some of the best people in this field working on this topic. You're not going to find the effects of GMOs and pesticides on health just about anywhere. And this is a travesty. Um, other things that glyphosate does, as if that's not enough, and this is based on the work of Dr. Samsel and Dr. Seneff, and they've taken some heat too, is that, that glycine, which is um, one of the major components of collagen, which makes up your musculoskeletal system, swaps out with the, gly with the glyphosate. So you may be having a substitution of glycine in your collagen with glyphosate. And the reason why that's a problem is it can cause musculoskeletal issues. And when you examine children today, they're doughy. Have you felt a kid recently? Go feel a kid. Um, and they are absolutely doughy. Their musculoskeletal system feels, doesn't feel robust. Um, and so this is something I've wondered about. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. Where's the data? I'm just going a lot on anecdote, and I'm honest about that. I say when I know something, I say when there's science to back it up, and I say when this is just clinical and it anecdotal. But after doing this now for 12 years, I've been on this road, I have over 5,000 anecdotes. How many anecdotes do you actually want? 20,000, 50,000 anecdotes. I have a lot of anecdotes. So I see something once, I see it twice, I see it three times, and I know I'm onto something. And this is called clinical acumen. It's called clinical experience. So that's what the problem with the glyphosate is. And you heard a little bit about copper um, and the zinc balance that I'm concerned about in your environment. And the last thing I want to touch off is regulators only measure high doses of glyphosate. And we now know that dose does not make the poison that you have an inverse curve at the bottom of very low levels of glyphosate. Actually, the best study I saw was on Roundup. So you, it kind of goes like this. There's a curve, right? X, Y. My daughter would be so proud. My, I remember those linear graphs. But look, going right up, more glyphosate, more toxicity. Let's, let's use Roundup, more toxicity. But oh, at the very bottom, there's an inverse U where there's toxicity at very low doses. And those are doses where parts per billion, where your endocrine system work. And Michael Antonio and his group out of King's College in London showed that two parts per billion of Roundup, that is way lower than anything we're eating, caused, not correlated, caused something called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in adults, in our rats. Now, we happen to have an epidemic now of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in adults. One out of four people, according to the American Liver Association, has non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. They're blaming it on the fructose because we're all eating this high fructose corn syrup. But is it the fructose or what the fructose comes from? It comes from corn. Corn is genetically modified and it is sprayed. You do not eat corn that's not organic that's not been genetically modified. About 96% of, of corn now that's not organic in the US is genetically modified. So if it's not organic, it's genetically modified. So this liver issue is silent. And it goes on to develop non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which then goes on to cirrhosis. Kids have it too, especially obese children and they already have the NASH, the non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is the more, more advanced form. It was out of an Italian study. We get a lot of our information out of Europe because Americans are not allowed to uh, research a lot of these issues here because science and universities are owned by big agribusiness. You were talking about Bill Gates before, they own Cornell. Now they're getting into Harvard. Purdue owned, Davis owned. These are owned. They cannot produce research that doesn't align itself with the big agribusiness that's funding them. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. So their research gets shut down.
Scientists have been, we are silenced. If you want to watch a good video, we produce the video about this on our website. Feel free to take it and use it. And it links our, what we find to the tobacco industry. Now, I could probably go on for about three hours, but I'll just zip it up here and allow for questions. Great. And so we can sort of wrap this up because, you know, I get wound up. I get very excited. I'm very passionate about this topic. So let's take some questions. Yes. What you're saying is fascinating, and I'd like to know more details about your video and how I could actually maybe get involved in the fight with the right groups, possibly. Woohoo! Do you have yeah, a. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'd like to know your website and all that. Absolutely. We'd love to give it out. Good, good, good. Yeah. Right. So. Um, before I leave. Well, before we leave, we'll get you that information. Maybe Michael can put it on this the source. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank yeah. you. And if you go to our website, www.gmoscience.org, we have a section called Videos, and we produce this video, and it's a great video. It's a great teaching tool. And um, I'll give you that information again, and you can get it from the source and off our website. So one of the things that really impressed me when I was at the state capitol meeting is with all of you, you actually showed a chart with uh, Bayer, Monsanto, AstraZeneca, and how this closed loop of economic benefit is really self-explanatory. Could you just talk about that mm -hmm. for a minute, uh, where it goes to the livestock and the agriculture and people and the yes. pharmaceutical companies? Well, and I have to give credit where credit's due. That beautiful chart was from my dear friend Howard Vlieger, student of the soil, who's a farmer, an organic farmer for decades, who's been on this battle even, you know, um, before most of us even knew what glyphosate was. And so th the way that Howard does it, and he does this brilliantly, and he walks the walk. Mr. Vlieger walks the war walk. And what he shows is basically from the beginning of the curve, starting with you know um, our food source all the way around that companies like AstraZeneca are making money at both ends the AstraZeneca produces pesticides they also produce the drugs for breast cancer right so and basically so what Howard does and he shows you and and if anybody wants that slide you reach out to me and I will get you that slide from Howard he would he will comply and we can put it on your website Oh, oh, go, oh my God, technology, yeah. praise Jesus, hallelujah, I love it. Um, I'm also, uh, I am a Luddite, but I've learned to embrace technology, um, like my 5G colleague there, whose name I can't remember, um, thank you. Uh, so, and that's basically what it's showing, this web of how it's all bought in um, from uh, the beginning to the end, and it's a web, and, and all these links to the web of how this is uh, produced. And the big agribusiness are making money at both ends. So, and you know, when we're sick, they make money to keep us sick. Yeah. It's a kind of a dystopian kind of thought. And as a pediatrician, I don't like to think that way. We're supposed to be like the happy doctors, right? But this is how we need to think. Any other questions that I can answer for you? Can I talk about the microbiome? Yes, please, please. So my name is Joni Blackster, and full disclosure, I'm the national sales manager for a company called Just Thrive. And the study that Michelle was referring to earlier is a study conducted by the research microbiologist behind Just Thrive. His name is Kieran Krishnan. And what uh, it's not what we now have is technology that reproduces in what is called a gut model study, it reproduces the conditions in a human microbiome. Because when you're testing substances like glyphosate and Roundup, you obviously it's not moral and ethical to test it on real people. So they have took three gut model studies, they calibrated them to represent the gut microbiome of a three-year-old, and I asked the microbiologist why, and he said because the conditions are actually very different in a young child's microbiome than an adult. And uh, one of those gut models was the control. The second, number two, they dumped glyphosate, just straight glyphosate into it and measured the effect on the gut microbiome. In the third, they added Roundup, measured the effect on the bacteria population in the gut microbiome. Then what they did was they added the uh, proprietary formula of licensed strains 
spore bacteria. These are a new concept to us, the spore bacteria to each one of the uh, gut models and measured the effect. We already know from a human clinical trial that these particular strains uh, created a 42% reduction in the toxins that are produced by pathogens in the gut, and that happened at only one cap a day in 30 days with no changes in diet or lifestyle. So we are expecting uh, to definitely see uh, some significant results from the study. If people are interested in learning more about it, uh, because it's not, uh, it's still in process for being peer-reviewed, analyzed, uh, and it will eventually be published. Um, once that happens, those results will be listed on the Just Thrive website, which is thriveprobiotic.com. If people have any other questions about that, uh, I am going to be in a lot of interaction with the microbiologist in the next couple of months, and I'm going to be completely picking his brain about it. Um, you're more than welcome to uh, call me or email me. My phone number is uh, area code 831-246-0162. And my uh, address, email address, is Joni, J-O-A-N-I-E, Blackster, B-L-A-X-T-E-R, dot rep at gmail. So uh, this is probably the most exciting thing that I have ever been able to be personally involved with. So I'm happy to talk about it with anyone. And Michelle is, in a few days, I believe, in less than a week, going to be in a conversation, a phone conversation with the microbiologist about the results we have so far. Thank you. Thank you. So I think um, I'll wrap up with a couple things that you can do on a positive note because, Michael, I really like what you're saying here is Dr. Doom and Gloom, no thanks. Let's be part of the solution because, you know, this stuff can be pretty depressing. So, one, I mean, eat organic. I think everybody gets that. Um, two, you need to uh, give your um, gut a plentiful of bacteria, um, certainly either in the form of probiotics, sporebiotics, fermented food, and or all of that. Fermented food does work, um, and um, even I, I'm no Martha Stewart, even I had my hand at fermenting, and I actually did okay. Um, so, yes, ferment, ferment, ferment. Um, that's what I tell people to do. I do people tell people to get a water filter, and I do tell people to take the shoes off at the door, even though my house, I can't get people to do it except me, and then I walk barefoot on all their crap. But um, the reason why that's so important is because the most toxic thing in your house is your house dust. Yes, right. Um, the s biggest source is pollution and house dust. And house dust has been shown to have high levels of tons of toxins and toxicants. And so by just by taking your shoes off, you reduce the toxic load for yourself, children, and your pets. And having had three dogs now with cancer, I'm very sensitive to this issue, but this is indeed true. So those are kind of simple things that you can do at home. I used to tell people, put your money where your mouth is and just shop organic, that was enough, but that is not enough anymore. And so we all have to be part of the regenerative movement, and I think we all have to take a stand and do something, no matter what it is. Thank you. You guys pissed off a little bit? No. <laughs> Are you inspired a lot? There's hope. Yeah. Hi, I'm Carmen, and I just wanted to remind people that um, four out of the Monsanto eight that were arrested on October 15th at uh, Monsanto Woodland for protesting. <laughs> Our arraignment is coming up on the 22nd of this month, so uh, please give us all the support that you can. Thank you. <laughs> all, right. All, right. all right, so we have one last speaker. I know we've gone a few minutes longer. Um, we are gonna have some food after this. That's a time where we generally like to break bread and actually kind of let the rubber hit the road, per se. I know some people had to leave, so it's a little frustrating. Uh, for me sometimes to have so many amazing people here and trying to connect the dots but one of the reasons that we spent hundreds of hours uh, with the programming to develop the technology and the network everything you hear all the keynote speakers are all platinumized and they all have access and hopefully we're asking them even if it's just once a week post your events post this information 
let's create an alternative media source and information source outside of the corporate media who has uh, their own agendas. So. Mm -hmm.